All right, Dad, so what are we, uh, what's the plan today? Well, I don't know. Day's kind of wide open. We can go uh, wherever uh, you and your green shirt want to go to. Okay. <laughs> this is about continuity because we're making a film. Okay. All right. So we had, I was just making fun because you wore that last shirt uh, shirt last week when we went to uh, Jeff's farm. You don't understand filmmaking. And and last week when we went to Jeff's farm was a great experience. That was I, good, yeah. I can buy that farmers have sustainability top of mind. I still don't understand the differences between the different kinds of farming. I mean, I know we have GMO farming because we have GMO food and there's conventional farming because I've heard you bitch about that and there's organic farming because there's organic food. I've heard regenerative but, farming, sustainable yeah, farming. Farming is farming. People are all trying to, farming is farming. People are trying to get to the same destination. If you're trying to get to a supermarket and you take one route and I take another route, we get to the supermarket. We're going in the same direction. That analogy does not hold. I mean, what about organic farmers? My understanding is that organic farmers, for example, choose not to use pesticides and fertilizers. So how can that be the same kind of farming how, how, as conventional? Do you know how wrong that statement is that you just said? Of organic course, farming doesn't of use course pesticides. they have to use fertilizer and pesticides. How do you think they nurture crops and control it? Control pests, Nick? I, I find you suspicious. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nick Syke, and lately, I've had some questions surrounding what's true about our food. My dad's a baby boomer who grew up on a farm, and he's worked in agriculture all of his life. Understanding each other isn't easy at the best of times, and when it comes to food, we need science as a common language if we're going to make any sense of the other's point of view, and that's the goal. Join me while I annoy this guy with my skepticism as we search for the answers to my questions about our food. Welcome to Learn GMO. How do we feed everyone without wrecking the planet? I think we all grapple with this question occasionally, but farmers have to grapple with it daily. My understanding is that getting away from the problems of fertilizer and pesticides is the whole reason organic farming exists, right? In the grocery store, I can look for organic labels, which make me feel good about what I'm buying. But then where is all this other food coming from? Rob keeps saying it's conventionally farmed, but I'm not following him. Okay, Dad, so you, you keep saying conventional agriculture, but I don't know what that means. Well, conven con you don't know what it means. Conventional agriculture, Nick, is utilizing the technology that farmers have available to them today, whether it's breeding or biotech, or whether it's pesticides or fertilizer or precision agricultural technology. Those things are applied by farmers utilizing science to produce food. Okay. Most of the farmers near me are conventional, so they can use any kind of seed, traditionally bred, hybrid, genetically engineered, whatever. They can use man-made insecticides, fungicides, and herbicides, and they can use man-made fertilizers. But all that stuff can get expensive, so conventional farmers have to get creative to manage costs. They use satellite maps linked to their machines, so they're only putting stuff on where it needs to go. That's cool. And those machines are huge and guided with GPS for ultra precision. And all that stuff starts to make fields pretty predictable and uniform, so conventional farmers can farm at huge scales. This is how most of our staple crops are grown. They can be GMO or not, but they're still grown conventionally. Okay, so if that's conventional farming, then what is organic farming? Why is it unconventional? <laughs> organic farming is- Hang on, he doesn't even buy organic food. I know for sure that this guy knows what organic farming means. Meet my favorite organic farmer, based at UC Davis in California, Raul Adamchak. Organic agriculture is a model of an ecologically based farming system. So pesticide use is greatly reduced in organic systems because we're using a, a very integrated kind of control that uses um, uh, crop rotation and plant diversity and biocontrol and uh, habitat for beneficial insects and resistant varieties integrated and numerous other things. There you go. Organic farming is based on ecology. These farmers are using things besides chemicals. Plant diversity to beat out weeds and not killing the bugs that eat the ones eating the crops. You can also plant pest resistant crops, I guess, so long as they're not genetically engineered. Hybrid seeds and some other interesting ones are okay too. 
More on that later. Organic farmers have to manage their costs too, and they use technology, but they also have to keep a closer eye on things. So they generally work at smaller scales to manage it all. This all gets integrated, integrated into an approach that makes using even organic insecticides or fungicides as a last resort. Wait, what? Organic insecticides or fungicides. Organic insecticides or fungicides. What, what do you think happens? They, they put a sign at the end of the field that says, organic field, insects and diseases, please stay away. Of course they have to control insects and diseases and they use integrated pest management strategies, but they also use organic pesticides. Okay. Like copper sulfate and pyrethrum. Or, wait, 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 wait. Organic pesticides is a thing though? Of course really? it's a thing. And organic fertilizers are a thing, Nicholas. Oh, somebody's lying. And I wish it was Rob. This is the Canadian government's list of allowable organic substances. Some interesting stuff in here. Pyrethrum comes from chrysanthemum blossoms. Poisonous flowers processed into very poisonous chemical. Quicklime reacts intensely with water, so breathing it in or getting it on your skin is bad news. And rhodonon, that's also made from flowers. But nature does make poisons too, and it's been linked to Parkinson's disease. In fact, in 2010, almost half of the pesticides approved for use by European farmers failed the EU's food safety evaluations. Ugh. Oh, and let's talk about BT. Okay. Yeah, Bacillus thuringiensis. It's an organic insecticide. It, you should... You don't know about this? You need to Google. Okay. It's a bacterium that uh, organic farmers use as an insecticide. And uh, what, are you, what are you finding? Okay, BT is coming up, but it's coming up in reference to genetically modified oh, crops. Oh, BT's coming up as GMO? Yeah. Oh, 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 I wonder why that is. What are you getting at? Bacillus thuringiensis, or BT, is a bacteria found in soil. Totally harmless unless you're a bug, because BT happens to release a protein that kills bugs dead. So spraying a pesticide made from BT is a good choice. And it also occurs in nature, so it's fully organic, too. This makes sense, but what does organic pesticide have to do with GMO crops? Stay tuned for part two to find out. Okay, so what does organic BT pesticide have in common with GMO? Every time you spray on BT or Bacillus thuringiensis as a, a pesticide, you have to haul water, buy the product, and you're burning diesel fuel, so the okay. carbon footprint is pretty big, right? right? Right. So what if you could just take that same technology from the BT, and instead of having to spray it on, just splice it into the plant so the plant makes its own defense against insects. Wouldn't that be cool? So GMO crops with BT integrated, you don't have to spray the BT on. It makes them actually more organic because you're not having to pass them over so many times, right? So just think about that. You took Bacillus syringensis, an organic insecticide, you grab the genes from it, put it inside a crop, you make it genetically engineered or GMO'd. Somehow it's okay for us to spray Bacillus thuringiensis on organic crops, but put it inside of a crop to resist disease and insects by itself, and it's like the second coming of Satan. This is starting to feel like a major contradiction. I think we'd all agree that organic products are usually marketed as pesticide and chemical free. If organic farmers want to avoid spraying their crops, and genetic engineering can make that happen, what's the problem? And if organic farmers are using pesticides, what about fertilizers? I've never really heard it talked about, but all farmers need to fertilize, so how do you replenish soil nutrients organically? Organic agriculture is based on animal manure and animal waste products, whether it's feather meal or blood meal or some other kinds of meals. Organic rules say you can't use synthetic fertilizers, but this? This is the alternative? Do the vegans know about this? Actually, you know what we'll do? I think I know where I'm gonna take you today. We're gonna go to an organic store. That's where I'm gonna take you. Yeah, I know. I, I don't wanna do that. Oh, Nick. You don't mix well with people who like organic food, Dad. What happened last time? <laughs> We'll just go and have a look, uh, and then I'll tell the story there. I don't know about this. Rob has a certain approach that gets under the skin of the anti-GMO crowd. 
For example, wearing an iHeart GMO t-shirt to a March Against Monsanto rally and setting up a GMO information section in the middle of an anti-GMO protest. Subtle. I just want to have a conversation. So I'm not sure how this is going to go. I think they have alarms that go off when people like him walk in. I never thought I'd be shopping in here, but we're going to have a look and see what we come up with. No alarms, no sirens. So far, so good. We walked around. Rob tried to get used to the hippie food. Uh, does Tony like quinoa? Yeah. Let's go get some quinoa. I think I see some. I didn't even know he knew what that was. Good. This is royal quinoa. This is only like seven twenty-nine. I wonder how much a bushel is, but. He sensed that this could be heading towards a free basket of groceries. I want some kombucha too. So I snuck some of my favorite hippie food in there too. Okay, now back to animals feeding plants. So potatoes are an interesting story because potatoes are very, very high users of nitrogen. So you'd have to ask yourself in an organic system, where does the nitrogen come from? When you think about it, nitrogen is the Achilles heel of an organic system because the only way to get it actually in significant quantities would be through animal byproducts. The utilization of manure uh, or the utilization of sprays that could include uh, animal byproducts or fish guts. Organic means ecological. And when we're talking nitrogen, ecological means recycling animal parts. So feather meal, bone meal, blood meal, and of course manure is what's feeding organic crops. It's a reality that I think isn't very palatable to people and they'd, they'd rather have this view of uh, small organic farms uh, run by young, healthy, beautiful people. But the danger to the consumer perhaps is that they have the illusion that uh, uh, food for all can be produced on this very small local scale by, by uh, suburban college graduates. And, and I, I think that uh, that's not the way the food system uh, works, for better or worse. So what'd you learn, Dad? Well, I learned that uh, people were really friendly, and, and uh, I learned that there's a lot of uh, a lot of confusion around what the labels mean, uh, even from the people working in the store. I'm feeling confused, and a little like it was done on purpose. I've totally bought the organic version of something at a higher price because I assumed it was better. 40 bucks. What'd you get? <laughs> Not much. To get away from anecdotal evidence and into some science, according to a recent Pew Research Institute survey, 57% of Americans think that eating GMO food is unsafe. And 25% of Americans always check the label to avoid GMO food. And 55% of Americans think that organic food is healthier than GMO food, which means all of this marketing that separates organic and GMO is working. And to understand when that marketing got started, I talked to this guy. Roger Beachy, the executive director of the World Food Center at uh, University of California, Davis. Roger was highly involved in the early days of genetically engineered food, which also happens to be the time when the organic industry really took off. There was a, di a discussion ongoing about identifying this new kind of agriculture uh, and selling of, of organic produce that uh, was beginning to, to uh, catch hold because it was a, a different way of agriculture. It was smaller, it was local, and it was with the, with the absence of use of insecticides. And I naively thought that perhaps my work, which was designed to, develop, to reduce the use of agric agriculture chemicals, would be of interest to them. It was not. And they didn't want to hear about the new technologies because they had another way of, of branding themselves as different. It's starting to feel like genetic engineering and organic farming could have been great together. But they were intentionally separated, and today, pro-organic usually means anti-GMO. But it didn't have to be this way. Genetically engineered crops are basically an improved seed. They're not a farming technology. They're not a farming strategy. So you could use genetically en engineered crops with crop rotation and biocontrol and other kinds of resistant varieties and uh, crop, crop diversity, or you could use it with monoculture, uh, uh, lots of chemicals. So it, it isn't really a question of what would the world be like if there was only GMOs it's, or no organic farming. It's a question of how do you want to use this technology 
to develop a more sustainable agriculture. So genetic engineering and organic farming aren't mutually exclusive. Genetic engineering could fit right in there and actually complement organic farming practices. But we aren't there now. And the result is we don't recognize how similar organic and conventional systems are and how similar organic and conventional farmers are. Hi. Hello. I can either keep shopping organic knowing I'm being misled. I can take my dad shopping with me, given today's experience, that'd be exhausting. Squirrely bagels. Or I can try to wrap my head around all this and actually try to absorb it and not ignore it. <laughs> well, it is confusing. But yeah. just because something says non-GMO on it doesn't mean it's organic. Just because something says organic doesn't mean the pesticides are not used. Uh, okay. Pesticides used by conventional farmers doesn't mean it's GMO. Very often when you have GMO crops, they actually use less pesticides. Don't feel bad. It's unbelievable to me too, and I'm the one editing this. I can understand it being confusing because you get in a grocery store and all this, it just drives me nuts, the crap that's being thrown at the consumer right now. And if you really want to have clarity on it, Nick, you just got to talk to some farmers and understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> you got a headache? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And I don't think it's going away. Welcome to Learn GMO. about identifying this new kind of agriculture uh, and selling a, a 